Um, so we're waiting for a couple more, I think, there. Yeah, I think we're um, But I thought we could take the first group up. Yeah. Coffee and Cossacks are waiting for us on the sixth. Um, so we can go up and uh, start the group. So I'm happy to stay down here if you want to take the first group up. And then, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, be yourself. Should all be good? Yeah? Is this your first time at booking? Yeah, yeah first time at booking. Yeah? Oh, cool. Hopefully they'll... Uh, We have about 200, I think it's 200 plus designers here at Booking now. That's a lot. Um, coming from a place where I was working with just five designers, that, that was just mind blowing. And I was, the first thought I had was how, how do we have this many designers and sort of control quality and you know, um, control, should I say, how we all work as designers and not have like chaos, right? And I think this is one of the things that sort of guides um, that. So to be a designer at Booking, you sort of have to have this three C's. And, and three C's are basically craftsmanship, um, communication, and commercial awareness, right? The, the company is set up in such a way that there is no way you can be isolated. So um, everyone is broken up into teams and tracks. So we have like a track working on sort of like a part of the, the product. And then inside the track, we have teams. And sometimes we even have like uh, tracks on the tracks, right? Um, but the company and the way we work is sort of set up in a way that you really can't work in isolation. For you to get anything done, you need to almost always leave your seat and go interact with someone else to get whatever it is you want to get done. Um, every single element on the site, on the mobile sites, on the websites, on the apps, are every single element. I mean down to copy, text copy you see, down to the designs, down to banners, are A-B tested. So the mining test elements on, on the page. Um, and that is, that is, something that again makes booking the company that it is 
humility is also a big one. Um, I don't think you can really be in the room if you don't have the characteristics. Uh, I think humility is one of the biggest um, um, traits that every broken employee has um, because you're gonna if you're gonna fail nine out of ten times, you should be humble enough to accept feedback, right? Like you're always going to you're most likely always going to fail, right? And if you are not humble, then you're most likely not going to try in this kind of environment. So from everyone on the trip and everyone at CCL, I say give to you guys. Really Thank cool. You so much Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, and as a thank you to you guys, we of course have the boat trip. Uh, the boat is lined here, a couple of meters to the left. We have lunch and everything, we have good weather. Yep. So I think it's the ultimate way of showing you Amsterdam. Thank you. Um, so enjoy it and uh, yeah, relax for the next one in half hour. Thanks guys, really nice. Thank you. Really good. Brilliant. So last stop in Amsterdam, um, Rockstad, uh, which which is a, which is an accelerator. Um, so the startups are going to be pitching to the community here. I think there, there won't be that many investors at this point, but you know you never know. So so last last point there will be um, startups will be pitching, but also there will be a panel conversation to generally talk about startup ecosystem in Africa and, and also uh, the one in, in Europe and see where we can pick some few nuggets and and, and levels from. Um, I think overall, Amsterdam has been absolutely amazing. You know, it's been it's been a great part of, of the tour. Uh, it's been somewhat um, also fun as well because we have a weekend. Uh, we have the opportunity to enjoy the city. Um, the, you know, the tour is taking a different shape. To be honest, I, I think uh, we might need to do some magic on the bus tonight. Um, the vibe is not as um, as, as uh, it was in London, uh, to be honest, and, and I think probably that's because we've had too many. Um, that's because we've had a lot of, of, of uh, me time. You know, people have, people have had a lot of me time in, in Amsterdam, so the spirit is not as high as it was in, in London. But we'll try and rekindle that on the bus tonight. I think Berlin will bring a different kind of kind of energy, and you know, and hopefully we can get things back on track. But generally, I think we've learned quite a lot. Uh, the things we've picked here has not been as much of interacting with investors, to be honest. Uh, it's been more around startup ecosystem, you know, what we need to be doing to build that ecosystem that can support many, many more, more entrepreneurs in Africa. Uh, and, and that in itself is quite valuable. So, you know, that's, that's what it is. Um, we're going to wrap it up in, in Amsterdam tonight, uh, travel all night to Berlin, and we look forward to the next day. Something amazing uh, happened today. We got an email team saying, all right, we're going to be there around 5 o'clock and we're going to bring a musician. <laughs> so here we have a, we have a guitar, uh, musician standing in the back. So uh, first we're going to start off with some nice African uh, relaxed music. So uh, Mutsu.
All right, so uh, once again, welcome. My name is uh, Rune Field. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of uh, Rockstar. So let me just introduce you uh, to the program. We have a couple of things coming up. First, a short introduction to Rockstar, then CC Hub. Then we have the pitch drive, uh, pitch, meaning 14 starters will be pitching for three minutes, three slides. And then if you have any questions, you have one minute to ask those questions. Then we have a panel discussion, or a little bit of networking, some, um, some drinks, some snacks here in the back, and then a panel discussion to learn a little bit more about the African continent, the startups, uh, and where they're coming from. Now, Rockstar was started back in 2012, and we started back then with a general accelerator. So we basically focused on any industry, any kind of emerging tech solution that they were building, and then, uh, Within a year, we started looking around the world and we thought, okay, if we want to build something for the future, let's look at what's happening in the world around us. So we started looking towards these global trends. And the trends that we identified was, this is not just by us, of course, McKinsey wrote a book about this called No Ordinary Disruption. But the trends are, that there's a growth in population, which is quite significant, like we've never seen before. So 10 billion people in 2050. Now another thing is growth in emerging economies. If you compare well, Europe to, for example, Southeast Asia, we see a growth in 7% every year. There's also an increase in technology adoption. So meaning from a new iPhone or Android phone is coming onto the market to the time it gets in the hands of the consumer, that time is getting shorter and shorter. I'm not sure if I can attempt to, to beat that presentation. <laughs> But that's a very good one. Um, and I think it's a good note as well for you to, to hand. Um, because when I descri describe what we do at CCR, I think on this tour, um, my talking point has always been around community and movement. Um, technology in, in very interesting ways, I think over the last couple of years, in, in really different ways. Forever, te technology has always disrupted and supported humanity. Uh, but I think the kind of technology we have access to lately it's changing our world in, in really, really, uh, in tremendous ways. And, and what you're going to see here today are 14 carefully selected startups from seven different countries in Africa, uh, from South Africa to, to Senegal, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, Uganda. Uh, which one am I missing? And Ghana. Ghana. Ghana won't forgive me. Um, <clears throat> and, and these guys are... Uh, you know, you know, top of the top in, in, of, of what's, what's now happening across Africa. Uh, most of them, uh, with the exception of a few, are, are businesses that have raised funding. Uh, they're already operating, so they're already making money. Uh, they're businesses that we believe are essential to the future of Africa in so many ways, as you're going to see. And, and they're quite exciting as well. I'm pretty sure you guys will agree with me at the end of uh, the, the talk today. Hi, good evening everyone. My name is Jules and I'm the co-founder of a startup called Real Food from Zimbabwe. So um, believe it or not, healthy eating is not only an issue for the Western market, but um, in Africa, obesity and lifestyle related diseases are on the rise, unfortunately. So what Real Food does is that we solve all the problems of why people are not eating healthy through the home delivery of recipe boxes. Um, as you know, in Amsterdam, is, you may know, is the home of HelloFresh, uh, which is now valued at 2 billion US dollars. And we are hoping to be the HelloFresh of Africa. So what we do is we um, offer recipes and all the ingredients needed down to the precise in quantities and ingredients, currently only in Harare, but we're looking to expand in Africa. Our customers use um, various platforms to order, which is quite interesting. They um, like very much to order through WhatsApp, social media, and on our website. So what makes us um, quite interesting is that we've been running for 15 months, and we've been profitable for 12. Our business model allows us. We don't hold much inventory, and we focus on farm to table in the shortest time possible. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Odwayo. I'm from Nigeria, and I run a company called Piggy Bank. So uh, imagine yourself when you were still in your 20s, fresh out of college and uh, about to get a house. You have a job. Uh, 
I know it, it felt pretty overwhelming. I know it was for me. And that's the problem we are trying to solve. Uh, according to the World Bank, only about 15.4 people in Africa actually commit to savings. But we all know that these people still have these responsibilities. So uh, this is a profile of our typical client. She's between the ages of 18 to 40. And uh, she doesn't save anything due to a healthy mix of our economic issues, the fact that she's always in debt, needing to borrow for responsibilities, bad financial decisions, and impulsive purchasing behavior. So we have created a platform named Piggy Bank that allows people to put aside small amounts of money periodically till they reach a specific target or they save up for their big responsibilities. Uh, a user just needs to get on our website or download our app, set up an account, and perform three basic savings operations. One is the auto save where they set up a savings plan and we act on that instruction and remove the money from their account daily, weekly, monthly, based on the amount that they set. We have the quick save, which is where they control their own savings by themselves and they can manually deposit money into their piggy bank account. And we have safe lock. The safe lock is where they can square away uh, all or part of the amounts that they've already saved on piggy bank and we return it on the day that they specify. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Baptiste. I'm head of marketing at Go Metro. We are a smart transport company from Cape Town, South Africa. So at GoMetro, we think that commuting should be easy and efficient. And it should allow us to get ready for work, to relax after a day at the office, or just enjoy the rain. But it's never the case. Uh, we're facing what we call at GoMetro park gestion issues for parking and congestion. We're losing time, we're losing money, we're damaging the environment, and eventually we're losing happiness. The thing is that no city has been able to grow its way out of these issues. But we think there's a solution, a solution that, that lays in flexible system. So we are building flexible mobility platforms to focus on delivering mobility as a flexible service. We, so we want you to purchase So 